Hello and welcome to Sports Tonight on Channels Television. I am Taya Salam. It's an abridged uh, version of the show on Wednesdays, uh, as usual. So we're going to be cutting straight to the chase. Uh, and let me introduce my guest uh, on the show tonight. Uh, Fable Itwa is going to be joining me from Port Harcourt, River State. Fable, since his greetings to you. Sir, uh, Merry Christmas in areas and yeah. a prosperous New Year in advance. Indeed, indeed. Uh, there's a lot to talk about on the show today. Um, for football watchers in the country like uh, you and I and a lot of Nigerians out there, the MPFL draw went down earlier today in Abuja, and uh, some people are excited, some people are not so excited based on what they saw. We're going to be talking about that uh, on the show. There's also uh, Novak Djokovic is back in Australia after what happened last, last time out where he couldn't defend his title, but it looks like everything has been resolved now, and Novak Djokovic will get the opportunity to reclaim his Australian Open title. Yeah, for Novak Djokovic, good news for him. I mean, a lot of uh, persons have wanted, we wanted to see him return back to Australia. Don't forget, COVID did not do him a very good uh, after he refused to take the vaccine that ensured he was banned and uh, he was deported from Australia. But good news that he's back. Uh, a grand, he has won nine single titles when you talk about the Australian Open. So he's looking forward to get a tenth. And I think the fans are excited him come back. Yeah. Don't forget, this year has just been a roller coaster for him. He was not also allowed to go into the US Open. For the Australian Open, I think it's going to be good for him, his career. Right now, he probably look at a ground he does very well, a familiar terrain. And not also forgetting that and, and Rafael Nadal has won 22 Grand Slam single titles. Right. So he is currently on 21. That would be like a motivation for him mm -hmm. to get uh, the Australian title next year. Great, mod great motivation indeed uh, for uh, Novak Djokovic. Uh, let me say, uh, I never had a doubt uh, that Novak Djokovic was going to play uh, this time around uh, in 2023. Thankfully, uh, the restrictions surrounding COVID uh, vaccination has now been eased in Australia, uh, allowing a, a player, uh, arguably or unarguably the greatest player to play in Melbourne, get an opportunity to play uh, you know, and uh, show our uh, fans uh, across the world uh, that uh, perhaps uh, he's still the man when it comes to this competition. We can't wait to see Novak Djokovic uh, return to the court in Melbourne. And who's not waiting to see Djokovic uh, return as well, too? Rafael Nadal, Rafael Nadal has been talking about uh, Djokovic's uh, return to the court, as well as the tournament director, Craig Talley. We're going to listen to these two parties, and when we come back, we'll continue the show. Is here good for for tennis, good for uh, probably for the fans. Uh, and let's say, you know, I, I mean, best players uh, on court always better. I have a great deal of confidence in the Australian public. I think uh, we have we very well educated sporting public, uh, particularly those that come to the tennis. They love their tennis. They love seeing great uh, greatness. They love seeing great athleticism, great matches. And uh, I have a lot of confidence that the fans. Uh, will react like we hope they would react and uh, and have respect for that. I think that he is going to be, uh, again, the player to beat. He finished 2022 as playing the best tennis. Um, he does want to get to equaling the current record held by, by Rafa. Um, and uh, he does want to get to a point where you know, he, he has a goal to be the greatest of all time. There you go, um... Novak Djokovic obviously uh, wants to be the greatest of all time when it comes to tennis. We've already seen a GOAT retire already in Roger Federer. We've got two more contenders. I think uh, there's no arguments about it. It's either going to be between Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic. Itwa, do you have a feeling that it's going to be a triumphant return for Djokovic in Australia? All right, uh, while we wait uh, for uh, Itwa to rejoin us on, on the show, sort of technical uh, issues. Uh, like I said, um, everything is now resolved uh, for Novak Djokovic uh, to play uh, in Australia. We know it's all about uh, the chase uh, for the most uh, singles Grand Slam titles when it comes to men's tennis. Rafael Nadal is on 22, Novak Djokovic is on 21, and of course, Roger Federer has retired on 20. So it's going to be between these two guys. I, I was asking you earlier that do you have a feeling, do you sense that it's going to be a triumphant return for Djokovic in Melbourne in January? I, I, I think it's going to be. I mean, when you look at um, how he has played tennis this year, 
Don't forget, after he did go to the US Open, we saw what he did at the ATP finals. You know, he was able to clinch that. He showed that, you know, as much as he doesn't have the very best of competition, but he still looks sharp uh, in his tennis. And we see that he can actually take on, you know, the very best to become the best. One thing I like about uh, Andy Murray is the fact that he challenges himself. He sees his rivals as an opportunity to go all out to get the best out of himself. So the Australian Open, he wants to prove a point, especially for the fans uh, who did not see him play last early this year. And yeah. of course, they shot the title to go to another tennis player. So I think he's going to give a give Rafael Nadal a run for his money and also challenge himself to be tied on 22 Grand Slam single times. Of course, we know upset a part of the game, but of course, I think that Andy Murray would give his best shot come January 2023. All right, Novak Djokovic, I wish all the players all the best. Uh, the first uh, Grand Slam of the year is going to start on January the 16th in Melbourne. We can't wait for that to come around. Let's leave uh, tennis now and let's talk about table tennis uh, right here in Nigeria where top seeds uh, have advanced to the next stage of the 54th edition of the Molade Okoya Thomas Table Tennis Championships at the Testing Balogun Stadium in Suleri, Lagos. The tennis champion, Rewan Akombi, was representing the NSCDC finished top of the group one after victories over Kende, Hamzat and Lukman Ibrahim of Arano Sports Club. Emmanuel Augustine of Anjan and then Dronology Club also progressed to the next round following wins over Unicorn as of Lagos State University as well as Fawaz Balogun. African youth champion Matthew Kuti, Lakonle Ajilo, Muiz Adegoke and Taiwo Shinuga also advanced to the next round. The championship, formerly known as the Ashojoba Cup, is the longest sports tournament in Africa and is endorsed by the Lagos State Sports Commission. Let's get reactions that are coming from the players that are featuring at this event. Hey, this time, I, um, I want to be the winner because last year was not a good um, record for me because I lost in the semi-final. The year before, I lost in the final. But, so this year, I'm open to, to, to win the tournament. Most of the players are not collecting money, like uh, maybe um, like salary in any, in any way. And it's not easy, like um, our table tennis equipment is so very um, expensive. So it's not, so if they, if they can like, they can put in place, like uh, maybe every month uh, players will be collecting such amount, all those things, uh, I think that will make us play week in, week, uh, week out. The experience has been wonderful. The first time I actually came, I was not as good as I am now. And um, it actually gave me an insight to who I'm up against if I want to go find the table tennis industry. And um, it's, it's actually it's quite an exciting experience. Though I have confidence in playing, but I'm not too confident, not too confident. But I believe with the practice I've made um, back and also with my training, and even today I have even job trained, do some training. So I believe um, I'm good to go and uh, possibly I can also win it. And what not really, uh, really on Akobi doesn't have that specialty like that. Just that I train like twice in a week, twice in a day rather. So I train in the morning and I train in the evening as well. While some players do train once. And I believe with the extra effort, this that's what keeps me going. You're welcome back to Sports tonight. So you just listen to some of the players uh, featuring in the 54th edition of the Molade Okoya. Thomas Table Tennis Championships going on right here in Lagos. Uh, let's move on with the show now and let's talk about uh, football. Nigerian Professional Football League, uh, the draw for the 2023 season was held in Abuja today. And yeah, let's forget all about the drama. It looks like the, the league will actually kick off on January the 8th. Uh, we have the draw for you. Same pictures are coming from the draw. Uh, they said it was going to be glamorous. Uh, that's a, a debate for another day, but there you go. Uh, Daniel Amokachi Bibu uh, helping uh, with uh, the draw right there in Abuja. We also get to see the likes of Victor Epeba and Chejin as well too. They were all on ground to help uh, the IMC, that's the Interim Management Committee, uh, conduct this draw. They are breached version of the league which is going to start on January the 8th. And um, let's take a look uh, at uh, the, uh, the 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 fixtures are, first of all, let's take a look at the table. Uh, like I said, it's an abridged uh, version uh, of the league. And in Group A, we have Quarry United, Nassau United, Plateau United. There's also Gombe United, El Kenemi Warriors, Aimba International, Aqua United, Bendel Insurance, Shooting Stars, and Remo Stars. So 
Those are the teams in Group A for the 2023 Nigeria Professional Football League. Let's go to Group B now. We have Niger Tornadoes, Doma United, promoted side, Wiki Torres, Lobby Stars, Rivers United is also, that's the defending champions, they're there as well too. Abia Warriors, the Kata FC Rangers International, Sunshine Stars by Yelsa United. So those are the teams that uh, make up Group B for the NPFL 2023 abridged version. It's why still with me, Favor. Uh, Favor, yeah, the drama, you know, that preceded all of this, the draw actually has gone on. And uh, it looks like a league is going to be starting in January. Yes, uh, I mean, we, we're excited. I mean, we've waited for like uh, four or five months for this to happen. In as much as we've had dramas, you know, coming to this particular stage yeah. from the IMC, from the club owners. But let's forget about that right now. Mm. Let's talk about what has happened. I think it's right time for the club owners to see if they can actually just shed their sword, you know, participate in this one. Because at the end of the day, we are looking at what is available you know, as the timing in terms of, right. you know, the number of matches to be played within the uh, space of six months, you know, or, uh, in 2023. And also, we would also want to have these players look more fitter or better in terms of their health than having to, to play more games right. in 2023. Draws, well, this is not the first time we had this. We had this in 2018, where, of course, we saw Aqua United top their own table. We got to Lagos. We saw Imba won the league at that particular season. Lots of also upsets and shockers. By that time, we had El Canemi Warriors relegated, and now they are back into the league. So I think the league should just start. We've had lots of dramas. It's high time we have these players start playing. They've been training for months. Yeah. And psychologically, when you look at the time constraint, the average time of minute or the, the time you read, you need to have to play preseason should not be more than six weeks. Right. But we had four months of preseason for They've teams. Been playing forever. So them to just come out and play the best of football come next year. I, I totally agree with you. The drama we want to see is on the pitch, not off the pitch, and that's why. I think uh, for a lot of fans, uh, they are kind of excited uh, that the league is going to be starting uh, very, very soon, early uh, next year. Let's give you more details uh, on the league. Okay, let's talk about the fixtures. I was going to quickly tell you that it's going to be uh, a Super 6 uh, later on after the conclusion of them group two groups. Uh, but let's give you the fixtures that are coming uh, for you uh, on January 8th. Uh, now, so United will take on AIMBA. There's also Aquari United versus Bendel Insurance, Plateau United versus Shooting Stars, Quarry United versus Gombe United, and Remo Stars versus Elkanemi Warriors. And let's move on uh, quickly to uh, other fixtures as well. By LC United versus the Kada FC, Wicked Tories versus Niger Tornadoes, Doma United will take on Sunshine Stars, Rivers, and Lobby Stars. So the Rivers will be opening their tight to defense against Lobby Stars in Port Harcourt. I bet they're very, very motivated after uh, being rewarded uh, for their exploits last uh, season. Last but not the least, uh, the Flying Antelopes of, a of Enugu, yeah, will take on Abia Warriors. So those are fixtures. Uh, match day one for the 2023 Nigeria Professional Football League. Can't wait for football uh, to start. Again, I was going to say there's going to be a Super 6 uh, after the conclusion of these two groups where the top three from each group will, be, will play uh, to determine the eventual champion of the season. Also, the champions will earn 100 million naira. That's the prize money for the winner of this abridged version of the league. Uh, let's get more on that now from the chairman of the IMC, Agbenga Elegbelaya, speaking on what's the needs for the players and the clubs. We have secured reputable sponsors for the league, and IMC is increasing the prize money of the winner of the league from 50 million dollar, being the current prize money. And meanwhile, the, the, the team that won the last league has not been paid anyway. So, yes. So, so we are now increasing it from the 15 million. Huh? Even the one before the, this last winner was not even paid. So, what we are doing, we are increasing it from the 50 million to 100 million naira. That is 100 percent increments. The winner of this season will get 100 million naira, not a year after, not a month after, not a week after. The very day the league completed. Please mark it and mark that one. Thank you. As I bring uh, talking and telling and assuring the players and 
and the clubs are that uh, if you end up winning this edition, this is a brief version of the league, uh, you're going to go home 100 million naira. Let me come back to favor. Favor, uh, the INC chairman sounds very confident, and even uh, a couple of shots at, at the LMC, you know, for not uh, paying up and stuff. Uh, but I mean, uh, if they actually, I mean, 100 million naira is not a lot in the grand scheme of things if you look at. Uh, you know, what it takes uh, to actually prosecute uh, Nigerian fo professional football league matches, but you have to say uh, it's still a start. Well, uh, for the INC chairman, Mr. Alec Belaye, he has made a promise. Uh, for me, with what I've seen so far in the Nigerian professional football league, I'm not fit to, you know, be excited when I hear things like this, except, you know, until the day the promise is to be made. Uh, to be to be made. We've seen promises in the past, you know, by the, the LFT and other different bodies on bonus to be paid to the champions of the league. And after that, what has happened? Now he's taking a swipe on LFC. I hope he understands that he, this time around, is a different body. Yeah. As much as, yes, it's an interim committee. So he should put his word to action and ensure that whatever he has said today will be done at the end of the day. But nevertheless, it's a good one uh, from what we used to have. Let's hope that what he has said today will uh, come into reality. But so far, so good, I must say, that he, uh, in the, within a short time, they've had to you know, bring this committee together. Right. They try their best. Uh, they try their best to ensure the league starts. So we only can wait to see the more improvement. And also the sponsors. We don't know the sponsors yet. We don't. But we hope to see sponsors come out and say, okay, yes, we are part and parcel of the league. Yeah. I mean, there should be some transparency in that angle. All right, so fantastic. Uh, we want to thank you for your insights, the analysis, our favor. Got to let you go now. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Fire. All right, cheers. All right, let's, before we close the show, we're running out of time. Let's give you a slice uh, from the NBA where history was made uh, earlier uh, this morning when Luka Doncic uh, became the first player to score or record a 60 points, 20 rebound triple double. Luka Doncic, the Dallas Mavericks star, incredible uh, performance against uh, the New York Knicks uh, right there. 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. He's the only player to do this in NBA history. You see some great players. Uh, he's in the company of great players like uh, Will Chamberlain as well as Elgin Baylor as well. Too. But uh, it's all about Luka Doncic. Uh, uh, incredible performance against uh, the New York Knicks early this morning. Let's take his post-game reaction. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, I, I know it was two seconds or something. I just threw it up. Hopefully, it went in. And we saw it on the on the on the screen right now. We're watching NBA TV. But yeah, I mean, it's just incredible to be in those kind of comparisons. I mean, I don't know how I say in the comparison. Yeah, this uh, just to be with those guys at any stage. You know, it's amazing for me. I mean, that was really impressive, you know. The whole team was just keep going, you know. I, I heard, what, what was the stat? Yeah, with 0-13, oh, yeah, plus 1,000 games with 35 seconds. That's impressive, you know, but everybody just kept it together. You know, we believed, and that's why I would say. I think it was a little bit of both. It was a little bit of yelling, too, uh, on the bench. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I think we need it. Uh, sometimes might not. Uh, but it was both. Uh, honestly, it wasn't just me. I think everybody would just keep focusing on the game, keep the energy up, and that's what we got to do every game. It's safe to say Luka Magic Doncic is in a class of his own. That's how we're going to wrap it up on the show tonight. I want to thank you uh, for your time. Enjoy the rest of your night. I am Ty Salam.